Big Bird, if you think that's impressive, just imagine seeing a giant flying reptile soaring overhead. Yikes! That's terrifying! Well, buckle up, because we're about to dive into that very idea by answering What if the Quetzalcoatlus didn't go extinct? Let's zoom in! Standing as tall as a giraffe at 16 feet with an astonishing wingspan of up to 36 feet, Quetzalcoatlus Nothropi was one of the largest flying animals to ever exist. Unlike birds, Quetzalcoatlus wasn't covered in feathers but in hair-like fuzz and it had a long neck supporting a massive crested head about 10 feet in length. Its toothless beak was perfect for hunting in marshy areas where it likely prowled for fish and small animals during the Maastrichtian age of the Cretaceous period. Roughly 72 to 66 million years ago, one of the biggest debates about Quetzalcoatlus is whether it could actually fly. Given its enormous size, many researchers once doubted how a creature so large could get off the ground. But recent studies suggest it could indeed take flight, likely by leaping over 8 feet into the air and then flapping its powerful wings. Once airborne, Quetzalcoatlus could glide like a condor, covering distances up to 400 miles in a single day at speeds of up to 80 miles per hour. Surprisingly agile despite its size, it was an expert glider built for long distance journeys. Now imagine if this enormous pterosaur hadn't gone extinct and was still flying above us today, what would life be like? Realistically, Quetzalcoatlus would probably have evolved over millions of years to adapt to modern ecosystems and competition. But for the sake of imagination, let's picture it just as it was a prehistoric giant in our modern skies. For starters, imagine going for a hike near a lake and suddenly seeing the shadow of a creature the size of a small airplane passing overhead. These pterosaurs would likely stick to wetlands and rivers, using their keen eyesight and long beaks to scan for fish and small animals. For the same reason, farmers near marshy areas might find these creatures an occasional nuisance as they swoop down to snack on fish in their ponds or inspect fields for other tasty bites. Thankfully, they'd probably keep away from humans. Quetzalcoatlus wasn't interested in anything much larger than fish, small animals and invertebrates. Still, it would be wise to give them plenty of space just like we do with large animals like elephants or rhinos. Given their size and unique needs, governments might even establish pterosaur parks, protected wetland reserves where Quetzalcoatlus could live and hunt freely. For scientists, having Quetzalcoatlus around would open up endless research opportunities Studying its flight dynamics could reveal secrets of aerodynamics we've never observed in an animal of this scale. How did it lift off? How did its hollow bones support such a large body in the air? Observing its behavior could offer insights into how these creatures hunted, socialized and survived. Our technology might even adapt in response to this incredible animal. Engineers could study Quetzalcoatlus wings to design more efficient gliders or drones capable of soaring long distances with minimal energy use. 
We might even find inspiration in its strong but lightweight bones for creating new materials in aviation and construction. In short, a world with Quetzalcoatlus would make our skies wilder, richer and more mysterious and perhaps inspire us to reach new heights ourselves, both literally and figuratively. Trivia time! Did you know the first Quetzalcoatlus fossils were discovered in 1971? They were found in the Javelina Formation, a fossil-rich area in Big Bend National Park, Texas. Sketching time! Today's sketch of the day goes to Harsirat Kaur. Hope you had fun today. Until next time, it's me, Dr. Binox. Zooming out! Oh boy, never mind.